Hey everyone, it's Kathy Cronin from Broken Roads, and I'm here today for Amy Howard at Home to show you a transformation on this gun cabinet. We had a client come to us who was asking for this to be transformed into a quilt or blanket display case. So we actually took the hardware off, filled in the holes here, we're going to add some new hardware to this piece, and my husband has cleaned it up pretty good on the inside. We're getting ready to do some clean slate on this to take off all the dirt, wax, oils, anything that would prevent our products from sticking. Then we're going to start with a base layer of one step paint and then after that we're going to use some milk paints on here and some waxes to seal it up and really give it a nice new transformed look. So let's get started. Clean slate, really all you need to do is get a clean, dry, lint-free rag and then just pour over onto your rag, one, two, three, I count about three seconds. And then you want to add it, just apply it to your piece to clean it off and then continually just turning over your cloth so that you're not re-wiping on what you've pulled off. And the really, really nice thing about clean slate is that you don't have to wipe it off afterwards with another towel. You don't have to rinse it off. It's just a one and done. You wait 10 minutes and then your next product can go on. So basically you're just taking it like this and running it over your piece. Getting a nice clean surface ready for your paint or whatever product you're using next. And I am going to pull that hardware off here in just a little bit. And I wanted to show you how much grime that takes off. Just, you don't even know. I mean, there's a little dust, but other than that, this is oil. This is oil on here that's coming off with a clean slate. So don't let your eyes fool you. Something might look clean, but uh, you really should use clean slate over the entire piece before you add any products to it, just to get all those hidden things that you probably don't even know are there. All right, we've got our piece clean now. We've waited our 10 minutes. It is dry and ready to go. I'm going to apply Amy Howard's One Step Paint in Spa White to this entire piece. I've taped off the glass and then I've used liquid tape along this edging up here. It's a little bit harder to use straight tape on. If you've never tried liquid tape, it's phenomenal. It peels off just like regular tape after it dries. And it's a nice trick that I use on rounded edges, things like that, that are harder to follow with a straight tape. So we're going to get started with this. It's going to take two coats. I'm using two of Amy's brushes, both of them chip brushes the one and a half inch and the two and a half inch chip brush to apply the paint to this entire piece. We're going to let the first coat dry about 20 to 30 minutes and then we'll apply the second coat. After that's completely dry, then we'll start mixing milk paint. I just want to take a minute to share with you about my thought processes behind the one step paint on this piece before the milk paint. Now if you notice my brush strokes were not super precise, it's not a real clean coverage on this first coat. We're going to have two coats of paint on here. You want 100% coverage, but it doesn't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of adding the two base coats of paint before the milk paints because this is all about layers. This is all about just adding some age and depth and just all this movement onto your piece. And so just have fun with this process. Enjoy applying the paint. It doesn't have to be super perfect. You can be a little bit messy with it. Just know where your coverage is. Make sure you get 100% coverage and just enjoy the process. I couldn't decide what to do to the inside of this cabinet base so I reached out to the client's husband and asked what her favorite color was. He said hot pink. 
So I wanted to just double check and make sure that that was okay as a surprise on the inside to paint this interior portion hot pink. And of course it was. So I was super excited about being able to do that and just mixed together some Pasha white and frankly scarlet in a cup and I am ready to go with a surprise feature on her piece when she gets to see it. The next thing I want to show you was somewhat unplanned. In the bottom of the gun case, oftentimes there are little holders, sometimes covered with felt, and these would hold the stock of the gun. So what we're doing on this particular case to cover that up is I asked my husband to cut a piece of barn wood, so he cut this out, sanded it down really well for me, and then I wiped it off with clean slate and letting it dry. And I'm going to apply Amy's water-based gel stain in Windsor Gray to this piece right here to go inside the case and sit on the bottom to cover those felt indentations. Uh, this will be nice and something they didn't ask for, but it does kind of give it a more finished look in the bottom. There's also a piece in the top of this that would hold the barrel of the guns as well. But in that particular uh, case right here, we don't have the ability to take that out. It would uh, damage or weaken the structure. So she said that was fine. You know, when she brought it over, she didn't even care if either one of these things were covered or removed. And so she said that she would just be able to cover that up with a quilt on the top portion. So that'll be all right. But in the bottom, I did want to surprise her with something that looked a little more finished. So with the gel stain, you want to make sure that when you open it up that you stir it very well. I did already stir this up. It smells amazing. It is amazing. It smells like a little bit like a perfume, a candle. I love it. So you just want to take a brush. This is a one and a half inch chip brush from Amy. And then just saturate your brush with the gel stain. And then you're going to apply it to your wood. Now, it does dry rather quickly unless it's super humid in your area. So what I would like to do is just to apply it and then I'm just gonna wipe off as I go through this piece of board. And then when this is completely dry, usually within a couple of hours, um, I will go ahead and cover it with a matte sealer so that it's nice and sealed and protected. So I'll show you how this works. Very simple to apply. It goes on very well, very smooth. And then after I apply it, I'm just gonna rub it off or rub across it with this towel. Just a clean, dry, lint-free rag to give it some warmth and a little bit of tie-in to the milk paint that we're going to apply it to the outside of it. It has a gray base, the milk paint does, so we want to kind of keep in that same theme. I could have just went with a regular stained wood, but since we're doing grays, we're going to stick with gray in the bottom portion of this cabinet glass display section. I'm using Amy's wedge brush to apply the matte sealer to this board. Usually one good solid even coat across the board is sufficient. When it's dry, if I want it to have a little bit of sheen, I can use Mind Your Own Beeswax or Light Wax on the board and then a light buff once that has come to tack. For now, this sealer goes on and then it'll dry and we'll move on to the next step. Next step is mixing the milk paint for this cabinet. So what we're using today is Amy's Toscana Milk Paint in Scandinavian Gray. It's in a powder-like form, comes in a pouch like this, and the ratio is one to one, one part paint to one part water. So I need a good amount, it, a little bit does go a long way, but I need a good amount for this entire cabinet. So I'm gonna just use a little cup like this, and we're going to add into it just a few tablespoons of the milk paint. like this. And whatever I don't use, I can seal up and keep it in the refrigerator for up to two weeks and use it on a different project. So then to try to take equal amounts of water and paint together, it's going to be a little bit runny, much runnier than you would normally be comfortable with when you're using one step paint. So you just mix this in. Really 
get down in there and get all of those little particles mixed together with the water. And another thing I like to do is I like to put it in the refrigerator overnight to just really let that mix together and sort of break down the little granules that don't always dissolve really well when you want to use this like on a fast paced project. So if I have the opportunity, I'll stick it into the refrigerator and leave it overnight. But when I don't have that opportunity, like right now, I'm going to use a strainer. So when I get this mixed up, I'm going to strain this into a different cup. And that way I'll have a clean milk paint to start with that won't have the little deposits in the bottom of it. That'll look kind of like pebbles on top of your project when you're applying it after it dries. So this is mixed up pretty well. It's a little bit runny, just like I said, so you can tell right here. Definitely runnier than regular paint. And then I'm going to strain it. Another thing about milk paint, I'm gonna add a little bit more here. Another thing about milk paint is that ideally you want to use it on your projects horizontally, meaning you need to you know lay your project down and apply the milk paint like this to let it settle. I am don't have the luxury of doing that on this particular piece. So I'm going to have to be extremely careful so that I don't get runs. Uh, so I might have to actually make my paint just a tad bit thicker than I normally would. Everybody does it differently. And ideally, if you watch any of Amy's videos, she'll tell you that you need to lay your piece down horizontally. So I'm kind of breaking the rules here a little bit, but like I said, I don't have that opportunity to do that today. So here we go. I'm going to strain this into this other cup and get all of those particles locked in. Make sure that we don't have any extra sitting around here. I'm go put this in a bucket of water so it doesn't seal up inside the strainer. Got to get that out of the strainer, I won't be able to use it again. So now I have milk paint that's ready to go to apply to my piece. So I'm going to take one of Amy's two and a half inch chip brushes and apply this to the piece and then let it dry a couple of hours and then go back over with the antiquing glaze and pull off the paint. Next up, antiquing glaze. And what you need to do is pour the antiquing glaze into a single cup, then add water to a second cup. You wanna take a sea sponge. You can buy these at the craft stores, even at the big box stores or a hardware store. And oftentimes, I have a basket of these here. You can get them in all different cut sizes. You can cut them down to certain sizes. I have some smaller ones in here too as well, different styles, etc. So you want to take your sea sponge and then just completely soak it in water. Get it nice and thoroughly wet. And then soak it in the antiquing glaze. It's a very watery substance. Looks a lot like iced tea. And then what we're going to do is what we call a pass over. We're going to take the antiquing glaze on this sponge run it across the piece where we've applied the milk paint, and then go back over and start pulling it off with the sponge, turning the sponge as we move so that you're not getting the same pattern over and over again on the piece when you're removing the milk paint. Then we'll let that dry and move on to the next step.
I've taken a look at my piece now and I feel like instead of using a dark wax to add some depth to this cabinet, I'm going to use a ceruzing wax along with one step paint mixed together. I have a sample here of Pasha White, a little uh, four ounce jar. It's great if you're not really sure what color you want to use. You can buy these online at Amy Howard Home and purchase a tester just to see if you like the color before you start out with anything on a larger scale. So with this, I'm going to mix ceruzing wax with some of the paint, and then I'm going to use the round hog hair brush. This is a super fun brush uh, on the piece, and then just highlight it with the wax mixed with the paint. So I'm just going to drop some of this onto the cardboard, just like this. And then I'm going to add an equal amount of the one step paint in Pasha White. So remember my piece is not nearly this white, so it's gonna add some highlights to it rather than the lower dark lights that the dark wax would bring. And then just mixing this all together, giving it a good nice stir together. The next thing I'm going to do is take my hog hair brush and take some of the paint wax mixture just like this, and then I'm going to offload it a little bit. At this point in time, I'm going to take it and run it across my piece and highlight different areas of it to just give it some glow and a little bit of depth the opposite direction instead of the dark wax kind of depth that's going to be the lighter perspective. So here we go. Next up, mind your own beeswax. It's the last step before we actually get to add the hardware to this piece and send it to its home. So with mind your own beeswax, make sure that you shake it up really, really well. There's usually a little bit of liquid that will settle at the top. Once you shake this up really well, then you wanna go ahead and apply some to a piece of cardboard, usually about a really thick quarter size amount on here. A little bit goes a long way, so you wanna actually just Start with a small amount, and then if you need to add more, you can add more later. I'm using Amy's 2-inch chip brush, and then I'm going to saturate the brush with the Mind Your Own Beeswax, offloading it onto this card, and then applying it all over the piece. I'm going to let it dry for about two hours, then I'll lightly buff it just to give it a nice soft sheen, and then add the hardware. Let's get started. Lightly buffing with a dry clean cloth will bring a nice subtle sheen to your piece after mine your own beeswax. Don't forget to tag three friends onto this video for your chance to win Scandinavian Gray Toscana Milk Paint. Have a great time with the paint, enjoy the process, and good luck with your projects.